of Rocky Mount's own North Carolina zone. Joining me here on the show here tonight goes by the name of Big Blanco. Big Blanco, what's going on, man? Hey, man, doing all right. How you doing, man? You know, good to good. Taking it one day at a time, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I'm just, I'm at home chilling, man. Blanco's away to take over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what's on the docket for this year? Because I already see that you're already starting to do this whole takeover thing, especially being with the Jeezy concert coming up soon, being a special guest. Right, 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 right. You know, just just working, man, trying to get as much exposure as I can, you know. Um, of course, I'm going to be dropping an album soon. Uh, well, another album, and this one's going to be called Snowflakes on Everything. As you know, that's, that's, you know, that's just the brand, you know. The, the Snowflakes on Everything, you know. So, of course, you know, just moving around, trying to get my name out there, man, trying to uh, introduce as many people to Blanco as I can, you know. I know your whole backstory, rather, we're going to get into that, but tell me about creating Blanco Entertainment, because I know you've said it before that you're not selling out for these record labels. So tell me about forming your own independent label here. Uh, you know, yeah, I, you know, I formed my own independent label, but, you know, not saying that I wouldn't sign a deal. Now, if it's the right deal to have that machine behind me and, you know, give me that push that I need to put me in front of these people, then, you know, it's definitely something that I'm open to. But, um, you know, I, I just went about doing that because, you know, you kind of wanted to do that because, you know, you want to protect the rights to, you, to, you, to your image. Like, you know, I kind of stress to people, like, you know, if, if you've got a name uh, that you want to use in this industry, you need to copyright that name so you can own that name. You know, just try to try to do it, you know, the, the most right way as possible. You know what I'm saying? So if, if the labels come looking for me, then you know you're gonna have to you gonna have to respect it and you gonna have to bring Blanco Entertainment with you as well. You know, I could tell definitely on the rise here we, when we look at artists in the game. One of the most versatile for sure. I'm, I always speak about versatility when it comes to artists, and you could do it all. Something that people may not know is that you could also sing. If you really look throughout the records here, I mean, Poison. I mean, if we talk about the even the visual, the creativity side of that is insane. Right, 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 right. You know, it's just you know it's just something that I could always do. You know, and I like you said, I pride myself on having versatility and, you know, being able to do certain things. And and like you spoke about the production and the video and stuff like that. You know, I'm not scared to to think outside the box and to do things that people normally wouldn't do in visuals and stuff like that. You know, just to set myself apart from the rest of the artists in the game, you know. The Uchi Wally, I saw you did that freestyle. I made sure to repost that. It's still so hard. So you always pay homage to the greats that came before you. And I know you've always been compared to Big Pun. So when you got to do right. it, it's still hard. You put your own little twist on it. Right, 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 right. Yeah, you know, I kind of kept it, kept it similar to his. But like you said, you know, I put that Blanco twist on it, that Blanco flavor. And, you know, it's just like, you know, I got to pay homage to, to guys like that, you know, because they paved the way for guys like me. You know, I can't, you know, I can't sit here and act like, you know, the legends in the game didn't influence me and the way that I carry myself, the way that I make my music, you know, just, just in everything. So, you know, I'm always going to be the type of artist to pay homage to the guys that came before me. That's, you know, that's very important to me. And I know you got your start basically in the, in the battle rap scene because you were just a regular kid playing sports and then you got all in the music around middle school. You hit the battle rap right. scene, J.R. Writer, Loaded Lux, Murder right. Mook. Those were your guys growing up. So what attracted you to the more lyrical side of rap? Because it's always interesting when you see artists coming out in North Carolina, like J. Cole, they always sound like they're from the East Coast with New York. Why is it that you were attracted to that lo lyrical hip hop? Uh, it's just... um. I fell in love with it because my friends in school, you know, it's just, it was just, you know, it was fascinating. Punch lines, the metaphors, like, you know, just for, to be able to hear somebody and just like, yo, he's nice. Like, how does he put something like that together? And, you know, I just, you know, it's just something that kind of grew on me. I wanted to be able to do it too. I'm like, you know, I want to learn how to do this just like they do it. And I want to perfect it in my own, in my own way. You know, so I feel like, you know, that's that's something that I did. You know, I just put my mind to it. And I always tell people, they're like, Yo, how, do, how do you rap? Of course, it's got to be, it's got to be in you. But I feel like it's something that's learnable. If you want to learn it, you know what, you know what sounds hot. You just got to, you know, formulate it your own way and put your own sauce on it, you know, and do it that way. And you've been doing that. And just by looking at the visuals, like everything we, we talked about earlier, 
and just speaking about it because jealousy, that's a big thing that when you really look at jealousy, that's the root to probably why all these hip hop artists have been unfortunately getting gunned down recently. When you look at that, right. jealousy is the root of all evil. I know they always say money's the root of all evil, but jealousy is the number one reason when you look at it that we have what's going on today. Right, right, right. Most definitely. Uh, you know, that's just something that, it, like you said, it's something that we deal with in everyday life, especially with this profession. You know, when you, when you get to leaving out the house and you looking like this, you know, it's just, it's just you know, you got a target on you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's guys that, and you know, I wasn't always able to do it like this. You know, um, you know, just thankful that I was and thankful that, you know, um, I'm able to pursue my dream and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's just, you know, it's just something that you deal with in everyday life, man. You gotta, you gotta keep your head on the swivel. You gotta stay prayed up. You know what I'm saying? You can't just, you know, that's just something that you gotta deal with. When we look at the root of jealousy and I look at it from the standpoints of what, what everyone does in their creative field, like it, your field, you know, you, you're the best at what you do. I look at it right. myself. I'm the best at what I do. Can't nobody right. be better than me, especially in, in, in both lanes. That's how you have to look at it. Why is it that other people can't basically comprehend that and just be solidified within themselves? Because that's where jealousy starts, because they start comparing their self, themselves to another person. Right, right, right. You just got to, um, I mean, I just tell people, like, I feel like, you know, somebody, you should just, you know, you got to live your life. And, and, and um. You know, because like I said, I, was, I wasn't always like this. You know, I, I wasn't always able to go out and, and do the things that I want to do. And, you know, you just, you got to live your life. And, and J. Cole said it in one of his songs, you know, no, there's no such thing as a life that's, that's better, better than, than yours. You know what I'm saying? You got to take what the Lord has blessed you with and make the best out of it. And, you know, grind and do what you got to do to get to where you want to get to. If you want to push to to do this and to do that, you know, you got to put your best foot forward, stay prayed up, and, you know, it's just, I mean, it just, it is what it is, you know, yeah. but yeah, jealousy is something that affects a lot, you know, uh, and, you know, rest in peace to, to a lot of the artists that we've lost this year to, due to jealousy. Yeah, and, and it's always, it's already starting this year with the French Montana video shoot down in Miami, you saw 10 people were shot at that, so it's just, it's unbelievable. Right, 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 it's, it, it's definitely dangerous, man, you know, to, um, to um, step out and you, and you, um, I mean, it's just, yeah, you know, that's unfortunate too as well. You just got to keep your head on a swivel, man, and, and stay prayed up and, and, you know, do good things so you'll have good karma and, you know, just try to, try to limit the, it's some things you can't do when you get to a certain stature and a certain level. Uh, you get to a different tax bracket, there's certain shit you can't do. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I always keep on. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's certain th I can't do the things that I used to do. Yeah, and I'm no. not out here trying to do the things that I used to do, even though, yeah, I might miss it. I might miss hanging out, doing doing shit that could put me in harm's way. But at the end of the day, nah, it, it ain't worth it, man. I got kids, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Shark, as we know, that was an important song. Sir, I made a song for my daughter called Baby Shark. And, um, I, I, you know, I nicknamed her and, you know, kind of call her Baby Blanco, but really, my daughter is like my biggest fan. She's three years old. And the reason why I named that song Baby Shark, because when she was younger, she was, um, she's three now. She'll be four in May, but she was two years old. And she, I called her Baby Shark because every single day she did not call me daddy. She called me Daddy Shark. So, you know what I'm saying? It was just, she was Baby Shark. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. No, that's just an inspirational song right there. I enjoyed seeing it, especially when you see the 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 bond that you have with your daughter. It's amazing when, especially when people put that in the music, and it brings out a whole other side of the artist when people really know who they who they are behind the scenes. You know, that's important. That's how your fans really get to know you. And when we dig deeper into this, I want to get into the the battle rap scene because there was a point where you had to take your foot off the gas in order to make songs like that because there's a difference between being a battle rapper. We always say that battle rappers are the nicest at rapping, but they can't make songs. So describe right. to me the process in which you had to go and actually make a real song, as people would say. Right. You know, like you said, it's and with the battle rapping scene, it's like, yeah, I loved it. And, I, and you know, but I didn't want to place myself in that box because I could have been doing smack. DVD, URL, all that good stuff. Like, I'm to that caliber. 
if we, we're speaking punchlines and metaphors because it's something that I perfected over the years. But like I said, you know, it's just, you got to learn how to kind of, I would, I would say let off the gas or dumb it down. Dumb it down may not sound good, but you know, it's like with the battle rappers, they rhyme so perfectly. You know what I'm saying? Everything is perfectly, it fits perfectly. Like you got to, you got to let off the gas. Like, you know, you got to learn how to, you might say the same word twice to rhyme a bar. Like a battle rapper would never do that. No, They would never end a bar rhyming with the same thing that they rhymed the first bar with before that. Never. That's something you, you got to, you got to learn how to do that. So, you know, you just got to kind of balance it out. Like you give it some gas, but you got to learn how to let off the gas. You know what I'm saying? To balance it out, to make a hot song, you know? That, that's interesting. When you look bad, back at it in the 90s, rappers didn't really rap and rhyme the same words. So wh- who do you think was a rapper to really make that mainstream if there was one that comes to mind where you saw that happen? Ah, oh, man, that's a tough question right there. Uh, somebody that was like really crazy lyrical to go mainstream, I think, you know, Definitely, definitely Jadakiss. Definitely Jadakiss. Jadakiss. Oh, no, I mean from the standpoint of rhyming the same word twice. Oh, from rhyming the same word twice. Uh, yeah, because Jada doesn't necessarily. No, he doesn't do that. <laughs> yeah, he, doesn't, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. <clears throat> that's, that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. You know, that's, that, that really is a tough one right there. Like, you know, I've, I've seen artists do it. But I can't really place a name on the first person to be yeah. like, okay, he went super commercial. We know he got bars, but he dumbed it down, let off the gas so much. I can't really put a name on that, man. You know what I'm saying? I can't really. It's a tough one right now. I can't really put a name on yeah, that one. No, it is, it is difficult. There's certain names that, like Drake to me, I, when you look at his right. mixtapes and then you see his mainstream stuff, he starts rhyming right. the same word with the same word. Right, but, right. It happens. Right, right, right. No, but I, I'm not a fan. But you do have to dumb it down because I know that the audience can only take in so much. And, right, you know, right, right. Case Lay has spoken about it before. Recipes to Case Lay. And he's someone that discovered you. And I, I want to get into how he discovered you and just the positive words of encouragement that he gave to you on the show and behind the scenes because you're such an icon in keeping the real hip-hop culture alive. Right, right, right. You know, I met Case Lay through... Um... Just, just, you know, just just a, in, somebody in the industry that, you know, just pointed me to Slay, especially with this Still So Hard record that I had because I wasn't really on Slay's radar until that person introduced me to him. Mm. So once once he introduced me to him, he heard the record, he was like, yo, who is this guy? Like, this, this, this record is fire. It could be iconic, you know what I'm saying? But it was kind of a stepping stone to get people talking like, yo, who is this guy? Then he saw me, so you know we. I flew out to New York, and um, and Slay was like, "Look, you know, he put it in rotation on on Shade Four or Five and uh, Hot Ninety Seven. You know, it just was getting a lot of play and, and a lot of steam up there in New York. So, um, you know, of course he wanted to meet me. He was like, "Yo, I got to interview interview you on air." So I'm like, "Okay, you know." So I flew up there, and you know, just the type of personality that I have, the way that I carry myself. Um, you know, he just, he's he just kind of drawn to me. And some of the things that he told me, like, he just looked at me. He was like, bro, he was like, first off, he was like, you know, I'm super talented. And he was commending me for my work ethic and the things that I was doing. And he was like, you know, he's been in the game a lot, a long time. And cause Sl- Slay was a legend. Slay's a legend. He's helped a lot of artists and stuff like that. But one thing that stood out to me and he was like, you know, before he passed, I was actually the last interview that K. Slade did before wow. he passed. Yeah, before he passed away, I he did the last interview with me. And he told me, he was like, yo, you, you just remind me, not, not look-wise, of course we might resemble or whatever, but he was like, you just remind me so much of the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, everything. You remind me so much of Jazzy Faye. <laughs> I don't know why he said it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm thinking like, what, Slay the beard? Beard? He was like, no, it's more than the beard. Like, he was like, it's everything. He was like, Jazzy Faye is my brother. And just, you know, you just you just remind me so much of him. He was like, I would love to see you and him work together and do something, you know what I'm saying, and put something out together because it would be special. So, you know, that's something that I kind of tucked away and 
I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever said that, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, to, uh, putting it on social media or in a v- interview or nothing like that. Just, you know, there's just something that stayed near and dear to me that, you know, Slay would compare me to a legend like Jazzy yeah. Fred, you know, want to see us do something and just, so that's, that's a couple of the things he told me, you know, he just real motivational guy, man. RIP to K Slay. Did you have conversations with, with Slay before he passed away about potentially do, doing a record together? Because I know he was always putting artists, hundred right. rolling 110 deep. I mean, this guy was, he was uh, just amazing and, and a goat in what he did and just right. giving back and yeah. making sure the hip, real hip-hop culture was continuing on. But did, did he say that you guys were going to link up in the studio? Right, most definitely. You know, you know, once once I met Slay and we built our relationship, I was definitely, you know, we were in the works of doing something. Like, you know, just... Whether, whether anything, hosting my tape, you know, of course I want to get on one of his tapes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's something that, you know, kind of leaning towards it and talking about it. And then, like I said, you know, I was the last interview he did. I would say this maybe maybe a week or two weeks after that was when um, the whole thing came about when, you know, um, he ended up contracting COVID-19. Yeah. So RIP to K. Slay, man, you know, his name will forever live on in this music industry. So. I, mean, I just gotta, I just gotta, you know, stick to the things he told me. Keep pushing, keep grinding, and you know, one day I'm gonna reach out to Jazzy Fay, like, hey man, you know, let's do something. Yeah, K Slay put into existence. Go check the interview. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> yes sir, yes sir. Uh, and making these songs, it's so hard, and doing Uchi Wally freestyles, and and making these, putting these classic hits into your own catalog and remixing them. Did you look at it as a risk in any way? Because when we look at Tory Lanez, he's spoken about it in the past about it, it, people were hating on him for doing that because he was one of the first to really remix and make it his own. Right, right. Now, you know, uh, some of those diehard pun fans and and people in New York and, you know, there was just, I received a lot of hate behind it. You know, I'm just reading online, never commenting back. But, you know, I'm I'm paying homage to a legend. I was reading online, and a lot of people felt like I shouldn't have done it. Like, you know, I don't like who who is this guy Blanco, feeling like he he's even able to do this to a point. <laughs> but then it was kind of balanced out. I had people showing me love, like, yo. He actually killed it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I, I've had people say, like, I'm from the Bronx. That guy, I think Pun would be satisfied. And Pun would say he did exactly what he's supposed to have done to my song. So it's just kind of kind of a, a mixed thing, man. You know, you can't make everybody happy. But, you know, just the fact, whether, whether they was talking good or talking bad, they were still talking and the views accumulated, you know? Mm-hmm. Money Man, you, you've established a relationship with Key Glock. When can you expect this Key Glock feature to drop, Jackie Chan? Uh, it'll definitely definitely be on the album. But um, I got I got a love. Excuse me, I got a lot of other stuff in the oven as well. But I don't I don't I don't know if that'll be my next single. You got to just stay tuned. I don't know how, however the dice rolls, but that's definitely one you can expect in the near future. I don't know exactly when. But in the near future, that's that's definitely you can expect that. Mm-hmm. You know? JR Writer feature on the way. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I haven't actually reached out to Writer about a feature, but I bumped into him in the studio where I was actually, you know, in the studio with a couple of um just a couple of guys, you know, from some people that I know in New York. And I happened to bump into him, you know, we shook hands and you know, I, I didn't get to really speak to him. I introduced myself. But I think that, you know, if I ran into him again or if I reached out, he would remember me, you know. So I don't know, man. You know, you never know. You know what I'm saying? I, w- I would love to work with Ryder, man. Definitely, definitely a very, very lyrical guy. You know what I'm saying? That's that's somebody that I grew up listening to. And, you know, just it, w- it would be an honor to work with J.R. Ryder. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we could put something together and, you know, have us a nice album filler. You know what I'm saying? That would be tough. Even Cassidy, because he, and he's someone. He's one of those right. battle rappers that was able to go mainstream right. and make actual music. Right, right. Cassidy, Cassidy was probably like definitely one of the first. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Definitely pioneers of the battle rappers that made it mainstream. It's just I don't know. He, he, he you got to put a certain swag on it when you're trying to go commercial. 
You know what I'm saying? You can still have the bars and stuff like that, but you got to put that certain sauce on it if you want to, if you want the cons- the commercial consumers to to uh, eat it in and take it up and 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 be receptive to it. You know, so yeah, shout out to Cassidy. I will work with Cassidy. I think me and Cassidy can put something nice together. You know, get somebody to sing a nice hook. It'd be nice and um, yeah, that that would be a nice one. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and when we look at it now. You see that everything has been going on in the world, and you've been on this journey right now for a little bit over a year, I heard, for, as well as taken seriously. So you just woke up one day and said to yourself, that's it. I'm, I'm pursuing this hip-hop career. I'm going yes, right sir. to the full, putting all gas, no breaks. No breaks at all. <laughs> no breaks, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, you know, just like you said, I just, I mean, I could always do it, but it, it's almost like, you know, I just, to be honest, to be completely honest, you know, and um, it's just like, I felt like I wasn't getting what I should have gotten out of life. Like, I knew that I could do it in my mind. I knew. And to be completely honest, you know, I just, man, I just felt like I wasn't, I wasn't living up to my potential in life. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't comfortable being a regular person. I wasn't comfortable going to work nine to five every day. Uh, my health, I felt like my health was declining. And I was like, look, while I'm out here, I'm going to man, I'm gonna make a statement and I'm going to enjoy life. And I had people pushing me like, bro, you can do it. You've always been able to do it. So, you know what I'm saying? Why not pursue it full fledged and go head first? And, you know, ever since then, that's what I did. Like you said, it's, it hasn't been long. It hasn't even been a full two years, I don't think, you know. And you're already making moves and connections. What would you say was the most important move right away? out the gates that really cemented you forward? Was it just releasing content? Because I know you've always speaking about it in the past, just wishing that you had a camera a long time ago to just upload your videos and Instagram just to get the content out there. So what was your first major stepping stone in moving forward to where you're at right now? Uh, my first major stepping stone was, of course, making the music. You know what I'm saying? Getting the videos. But my first major stepping stone was locking in with, with, with DJs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I always preach this. And that's something that people don't really, you know what I'm saying? They don't understand the value of that, a lot of people. Like, you need a budget, a specific budget set aside for the DJs. Because the DJs are like the heart of the music industry. Without the DJs, that's the heart. They're not, there's no blood pumping to the body. There's no music getting to the consumer without the DJs. So, I think, you know, I, I had locked in and um, I did some some sponsorships with uh, a few of the DJ coalitions that we got and just formulated some real solid relationships with DJs, which led me into radio um, interviews and my songs being broken on the radio and in the clubs and, you know, just having my name circulating around and, and being able to touch so many people you know, due to uh, having the DJs on my side. So that's probably something that was kind of, that was real major for me, you know, to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And especially you preached it before, it was just staying out of trouble. Right, most definitely. Yep. Most yeah. definitely staying out of trouble. Yep. And, and you've been able to manage that this far, and especially going further in your career here, making moves into the new year and ma- making connections with people like L. Nice, because he's a real one too. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to L. Nice. Um, I actually met L. Nice through my producer J Manifest and his Instagram is J Manifest NC. You know, so if anybody want to check him out, dope guy, you know, he's produced for some of the best of the best, you know, from rappers to singers, uh young Dolph to Anthony Hamilton. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, that's just a broad spectrum of of w- what he has going on. But you know, he just, you know, he, he saw how serious I was taking it. And you know, me and him grew up in the same well we're both from the same hometown, which is, you know, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And, you know, he just, you know, with, with, with motion and, and people see that you're taking care of what you got to get done and you're taking it seriously, then, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll open their uh, contact list to you. And, and, you know, just so I met L. Nice and, you know, hey, man, real good guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Somebody I definitely appreciate and, you know, trying to help me further my, myself in this music industry. Absolutely. You know? One of the realists to do it. And and you're already out here doing it, with, especially with your name, Big Blanco, because this is something your name was given to you by a lot of your friends growing up. Because right, they right, said right. that you were always like a kingpin, like a boss. And they said, <laughs> we're going to call him Blanco, Big Blanco. 
You see it. Look, you see it. Yeah. So, I always it might it might not have been no big crazy diamonds, but I have always dressed clean. I have always had a little jewelry, and I'm half Puerto Rican and half black. So you know, just they it was all like, yo, you step out, and they're like, man, you look like a boss. You look like a kingpin, man. And then they knew I was half Spanish, so they was like, we're gonna call you Blanco. We're gonna call you Big Blanco, and it's just you know. They started calling me Blanco, Blanco. It just, it stuck, man. It sounded cool. So I ran with it. You that know worked. I, I know with releasing, it's still so hard. You were reaching out to MTV, BET. Did you receive any response from them at all about collaborations in the future? Uh, in the future? No, I, I didn't I didn't speak about the future. Of course, you know, it's it's still so hard. Video has been played on MTV. It's yeah. Been on MTV. Uh, it's been played on Revolt TV. It's... You know, it got I got some real good circulation with that one, but just the main thing, almost like with with them just knowing who I am, and they know that when Blanco comes, the business is gonna be correct, the music is gonna be good, the visuals are gonna be up to par. So you know, just that alone, you know, I know that if I have to reach out in the future for anything else, they know that I'm coming official and I'm gonna get a response back. You know, I'm just I'm thankful for that. You know. But as far as anything in the future being solidified and on the table with them, not quite yet. But in the future, you know, stay tuned. Absolutely. We see it coming. So what are the next moves here, the strides that you're going to make in 2023? Because you said this is your year, especially on the post for the, the performance with Jeezy, the Trap Fest. Yeah. So what, what are the strides you're going to be looking to make this year to make 2023 Big Blanco's year? I mean, of course, you know, just dropping music and the tape's going to come and you know, just uh, feeding the feeding uh, feeding the music to the DJs and polishing up on my relationships and servicing the DSPs, servicing the playlists and stuff. And then, and then it's like you know, um, I've already got a name in my hometown, my whole state. I've already got a solid name. Everybody knows what's going on. Now it's time for me to hit the road and and start getting booked and and showing up to these coliseum and arena shows in other states and other just all the way across the United States anywhere that I feel like I should touch the market and let them know exactly who I am that's just really what I'm focused on now like I'm not I'm not focused on being in a club and doing stuff like that nah man I'm going to put that budget behind promoting in these other cities these street teams and just putting everything out there on the floor, on the line to show these places, these other states and these other cities who I am. And I feel like it's going to be very, um, very influential for me to other people if I do that, you know? You conquered North Carolina already. So what's the next state that you want to make your mark in? Uh, I would ha I would have to say Georgia and Florida. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Atlanta and Georgia is where it's at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Atlanta, Georgia, and shit, the Florida, Miami, Orlando, uh, you know, Tampa Bay, the whole Florida, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's unbelievable when you look at just the culture change in hip hop, when you look at the 90s and the early 2000s, how New York was it. And then you had the West Coast, of course, with L.A. and W.A. and all that stuff and the movement, Ice Cube and stuff. And then he eventually went to the East. And the, the East just got completely thrown aside. And everyone said that not Georgia's the number one spot. And we just saw it blow up, Outkast, Goody Mob, all And it just went off from there. Right, right, right. Definitely, man. Definitely. Um, Georgia, Georgia, they, yeah, they did go, like, off the Richter scale with as far as the music industry. They, was, they were definitely the face of the music industry. It's like, would have all types of, I mean, it was even possible if, if somebody was, I mean, if you was that, that believing in yourself and you had the budget and you were able to do it and you had the contacts and stuff like that, you know, it's artists that have picked up and moved to Atlanta. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and I'm going to move to Atlanta and it's going to, and I'm going to pop and I'm going to be the next big thing. I know artists who have actually do, who have actually done that. Yeah. And that's the next move for you in the future. It's going to be happening. I feel it. Ah, yeah, man. I don't, I don't know if I'm moving to Atlanta, but... You're going to be there making connections and noise, for definitely, sure. Definitely going to be on the scene in Atlanta, man. Like, that's something major. You know, if you tap in with the DJs in Atlanta and you can have your music circulating straight through Atlanta, that's why in Atlanta, like, you know, they're just... 
it, that's so that's so um I can't I can't formulate the word for it, but the DJs in Atlanta, they're all playing the the, the uh the music of the people from Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? They stick together. Atlanta stick together. You know what I'm saying? It's beneficial for them. So hopefully if I can get into the mix and you know, tap in with these DJs. I always preach the DJs, the DJs, the DJs. That's probably one of the most important things. So up and coming artists, tap in with those DJs, man. You already know. Big Blanco, anything else you want to let the audience know that we didn't touch on tonight? Uh, you know, I just yeah, I just want y'all to stay tuned, you know. Tune in, follow me on my Instagram, big underscore blanco with three O's. And you can hit me on the website too. I am bigblanco.com. Just, you know, tap in, man. Follow me, and you're going to see what's going on. You're going to see why they say Big Blanco's the biggest. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just check out the music. All you got to see is that music catalog, and you'll know that this is this is official, original, yes, lyrical. We already know. Yes, sir. Everything, man. Everything, you know. I pride myself on versatility, man. So y'all give it give it a look. Check it out. And, you know, I think you'll be impressed, and, and, I'm, and I'm pretty sure you'll follow me and see what I got going on afterwards, man. And I'm sure they will. It's going to it's gonna be your year. 2023 is the year for you, man. Keep going. The moves are already happening, especially with the Jeezy performance. And just the, it's the musical content that's really sold me on you. Because a lot of times people get caught up on it. Oh, I'm performing for Jeezy. Yeah, but your music could suck. You got to <laughs> go check out the music catalog. And that's what that's what we have right. here. And I checked that right. out. And it, it's certified. It's up from here. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you. You already know, man. Thank you for coming on the show tonight, man. I appreciate it. You're always welcome. Shout out to El Nice. And yeah, right, man, right. keep building. Most definitely, man. Appreciate you. You be you blessed. Know. You too, man. Enjoy the rest of your night. Take care. Stay safe. All right, boss, man. Yeah. Peace out, man. Peace.